designates which union you you have to join no. if you have union representation. No. The labor board, for which I went through, said, sustained my argument. But they said I lost because of my argument that I only work for one employer, which is right. and I'm the provider. Right. And so it's a two person shop. No. We both voted non union right. and yet they still withhold it. So no. I, I want to know what the deduction authority is from my paycheck, which they don't have. No. That's, a, that's a good question. Well, how can I find I that? Steve, give me his number and name and we'll find out for you. Oh, I would like to find out because I've been trying to find out for sure. almost four years. You know, I'm glad you brought that up real quick. Are you guys familiar with the FAA? Do you know what's going on with that? Because along those lines, the sequestration issue, I had the uh, United Airlines in my office this week, a couple of pilots, and they're cutting back 30% of allowing airlines to take off from the airports, especially Chicago and LA, to hold you hostage just because they say sequestration, but they do have the money and they don't need to do that. So this is a perfect example but what happens when these government unions get in power? They're literally trying to hold the entire country hostage because they got a pay cut of 11%. And they're going to take their furloughs all on the same day just to shut down the system. So that's what happens when these people who you pay their salaries, when they do that, you know, it's a balance of power where the representation diminishes. So you're going to be hearing a lot about that over the next few days. It's going to be pretty interesting. Ready to fire yeah, well, Reagan took care of that. Yes. Yeah. Any other questions? Hey, uh, my name is Joe Minuka. Hey, Joe, how are you? Thanks, how are you? Good. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. And to the, uh, I'd like to address the folks that are here this evening. And uh, my thoughts are concerning the right to vote. Mm -hmm. and people are getting killed all over the world in conflicts. There's at least 21 conflicts around the world here that people are fighting for freedom. <laughs> now, the question of voting, and it, you say, well, vote, vote. But you know, this thing of voting is very complicated. And I think, I would say that most people here understand how to do it. It takes a lot of homework. You know, you really have to be intelligent to govern yourself. But I do say that I'm sure some of you, and I know I am, and I go to vote, I don't understand all of the issues. I don't know a lot of the candidates. And I, I do the best I can. And I think our advice is to go out and talk to the people at a large percentage without them and say, study the issues, learn all you can. And if you don't know everything and don't understand, at least your vote and your representatives and the people that uh, are listening right. are seeing that you do vote. Yeah. And, and if you don't vote, you're very important. Uh, if you, you know, if, if, you, if you don't vote, you're completely irrelevant. You're absolutely right. You've got to get involved. Thank you. Yes, sir. I have a question. Ron Stanley, I'm, I'm new here to Paradise. Mm -hmm. And I, um, I empathize with these employers that have, are penalized for being right. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, uh, sir, what, uh, is there anything in place in government uh, a, a few years back, uh, CARB pushed through MTBE, which was an additive to our gasoline, right. was supposed to make the air cleaner. Right. In fact, it did nothing. Right. I worked in water resources, and we found out in water resources it was polluting the water. Right. Isn't there any accountability? One agency didn't know what the other one was doing. Right. Doesn't right. so can't the judiciary come in and say, "Hey, we're going to fine car for screwing up the water"? Well, here's isn't the, there something on the books well, for something like that? Well, here's the problem. When you get fined by car, you have to appeal the fine before car. Think about how corrupt that is. <laughs> and here's another issue. When you get fined by car, they have a press division to make sure that they send that fine out to the, all the newspapers in the state of California. How's that for representative government? Look, at, if you want to fix it, you got to have a governor that's pro-business. you got 24 months or less to do that. That's how you do the overnight fix, okay? Other than that, we gotta take back the two-thirds and keep them from being able to have carte blanche on all these regulations and fees. That's why Prop 26 passed, so we could stop that. But who's the one that sent these people here? And all, who sent them there? Just tell somebody, tell me. Who sent this oh, people? Oh, Yes. 
But isn't there something oh, in one place? Time, please. One time. Isn't there something in place though where if, if, if our government, if, if one side starts getting lopsided and, and unelected officials are doing doesn't can't the judiciary say, hey, this is not the way it's yeah, supposed to work. Just who appoints those judges? Governor Brown. You see what I'm saying? The Attorney General. You know, I mean, I agree with what you're saying, but there's checks and balances. But we're losing those balances because they've handed the reins over to regulatory agencies. And it's not the agency's fault, it's the legislator's fault for doing it. That's kind of the point I'm trying to make. Yes, sir. I, uh, I agree that the, uh, the vote is the best way to do it. Okay, but the question is, we just had a federal election, uh, state, the United States election, where we had over a hundred counties vote 99% for Obama. Statistically impossible. Yeah. We also had the military that wasn't counted. Yeah. It was only a separation of four million votes, yeah. and Obama stole the election. Now, do we really have a vote if we have electronic voting machines in California, which are easily manipulated. You can get on the net and find out how it's done. Why can't we go back to a paper ballot and ensure our election yeah. so that we can have our vote right? You, you are in charge of that. Yeah, I've been on elections for the last three years, and we have fought. Uh, it got to the point where one time my colleague and I just got up and walked out, and the words that I used on my way out of the committee room was this is becoming a big banana republic. There's no accountability. You can register uh, to vote, but you don't have to show proof. You know, I mean, you see how dangerous that is. But this is, the, this is the strategy of the left, is to flood the system so much that they basically take the system. That's what it is, accountability. So we've got to go back. I think that what's going to happen is the economies in California were, were the worst economy in the country. We're overregulated. We have high poverty rate. Obama's going to drag, CARES going to drag that down. We, by the way, there's a study done by George Mason University. We're the third least free estate in the country, by the way, just to let you know. So it goes hand in hand. So how's that working out? So sooner or later, if we pray and we ask the good Lord to help us, and we unite together and take the fight, we could turn this thing around. Now remember, George Washington marched 20 miles with his troops through the snow, and they had no shoes. Right. Okay, we can do this. Do we, now it's our turn, right? Do we have electronic voting machines in California? And if we do, can we, do. we get rid of them? We do. Can you introduce a bill to get rid of them? The, the, yeah. We can never get that out of committee, but the way to do that is to get a different Secretary of State. Okay, Deborah Bowman is the one who passed, signed, all, not only signed, didn't sign these laws, but we're pushing these laws that came in through my committee. I've got two votes, they've got six votes. We lose every time. So it's important to get legislators in there where we at least take back to two thirds, we take a bite at a time, we get a pro business governor, we start winning these fights. Believe me, I was there when we stopped a lot of stuff. This is the first time I've been there. When we can't stop a lot of stuff, and, the, and guess what? You know how bad it is? We're hoping that Jerry Brown will do it for us. That's how bad it is. Think of that. Dean, can you take one more? Yeah, one more, and I have to make a little point. Well, what I have is tonight I've heard so many people talking about voting, getting things done. If you're not a registered voter, and for all the newcomers here, we've got a table out in the yeah. lobby where you can register to vote tonight. Mm -hmm. And it's really important that everybody vote and take your neighbor with you when you do. Thank you. I just want to thank you guys so much. I gotta head out and go vote. Yeah. 
forward vote. Well, maybe we could do voter ID for you. That's an object yeah. you can do yourself. I've got a bill in there that requires ID to be, be shown. It's a two-year bill. I'm bringing it up in January. So I'd love to have you guys in that room. Flood, how's that sound? Email us. Okay. Well, we all, I guarantee you. We will. Okay. Thank you, guys. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks again for being here. Uh, if you've got your NRA cards, make sure they get back to Fred. Uh, we haven't got our next agenda set, but we'll get it out to you if you're all on our email. Uh, remember, the emails now will come from Paradise uh, Tea Party at Reagan.com. And also remember, we pay for this building by your donations. There's a bucket on the way out. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Good night. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, no problem. Mr. <laughs> <laughs>